Hello, in this JavaScript video, I am going to show you the switch statement. So the switch statement is sort of similar to the if statement. If you essentially just want to check if, let's say, a variable equals some, you know, value, and then else if that variable equals another value, else if the variable equals another value, and etc., etc otherwise have some sort of default fallback, then a switch is fantastic. Outside of that sort of scenario, a switch is, well, useless. So if, if you are essentially just checking against a single variable and it is a simple equals comparison, then a switch is pretty good. So let me put create a variable. So var, I will call this awesome var, and assign a value of full. And now to do switch statement, you put switch, and then you put open close bracket inside here. You put the variable that you're checking, so awesome var. Then you put curly braces, and then you put something called a case. And here is where you put what you want to check your variable is equal to. So let's put zero, and you put colon, and then what you do is put the keyword break and any code that you want to run if awesome var equals zero you put in between the case and the break so i'm simply going to do console.log this is zero and i'll do a total of six conditions four five six okay so one two three four and five i just need to update these values as well three four five save it and if i reload see what we get it says this is four because it goes here awesome var you know it assigns a value of four to it and it checks is awesome var equal to zero nope is awesome var equal to one nope is it equal to two? No. Three? No. Is it equal to four? Yes, it is. So this is four, and and that is it. Okay. So if you want some sort of default fallback, so if I change this to forty, which isn't one of the valid cases, one of the valid checks, you reload. As you can see, nothing appears. If you want a default, you just put the keyword default colon at the end, and you can put console.log. Add a few extra empty lines so it's easier to see. I'll we'll just say this is the default value. Okay, and what you can do, you put in a break here because the default at the end is sort of redundant, but we'll, we'll put it there. And I'm going to explain in a second exactly what that actually does. And if I reload it, as you can say, this is the default value. So that is really it for the switch statement. The only one last thing I want to explain is the break case. So let me show you what happens. So if I put zero, and it says this is zero. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's actually comment out this break, this break, this break. That should be enough to illustrate the point. If I reload, we get this is zero, this is one, two, and three. You might be thinking, but awesome var is only zero. But what happens is if it gets into a case, so it gets into case zero, it doesn't have to be the first case. So let me demonstrate for so case one. It, it gets into case one. Let's change it back to zero. So it gets into this first case, prints out this bit of code. Because it doesn't see a break statement, it just keeps going. But it doesn't actually continue with the checks. It just goes to the code inside the next check. There's no break. It goes to the next checks code. No break. Goes to the next checks code. And then there is a break. You might be thinking, when would you actually want something like this? And the scenario is when you when you actually have some code that you want to run for let's say multiple conditions and the way you could actually do that is by doing something like this so maybe you want the same code for case 0 1 2 and 3 
And there you go, you'll run the same bit of code. And let me just change this back. So that's it for the switch statement. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.